Hi everyone, it's Joanne with the work in progress here. A little bit different view of things today and a way different video than what you are used to seeing on my channel. I just got bit by the crafting bug and I have several projects that I have been wanting to do for a while. Some you can see I have already started here and I thought I would go ahead and just share a video with you and show you some of the things that I'm going to be kind of repurposing maybe upcycling uh, for the purpose of using them for either decor in my own home or possibly uh, uh, selling on Etsy. So we will see what happens. I have several projects, as I said, to share with you. I think I will get started with what I'm hoping might be one of the easier projects. And that is to stencil on this crate that I found some time ago. I had already been using it in a corner in my room, in my family room, but I thought it would be nice to put some kind of stencil on it. I don't do a lot of stenciling. Um, I don't have a Cricut or anything like that. So I went to Walmart and I found this package of 46 stencils. You see them right there. They're all kind of farmhouse themed, I guess. There's a close up of what comes in the package. And I think it was around $10. So I thought it was, a, it was a pretty good deal for all of the stencils that you get. So I'm gonna clean off this table a little bit and we'll get started on that stenciling. I have another project here. This is the bottom uh, for that very large cloche that I showed you from my Girls Weekend Away haul. Uh, a couple of paints that I'm going to be using. I'll go through everything that I'm doing as I do it. These are some of the bottles that I found during my girls weekend away. I have plans for those, which I'm going to share with you. Uh, some more little bottles, again, that I found during that weekend away. A lot of things going on today. <laughs> And if I have time, this piece right here, I actually don't remember where I picked it up. It might have been at the outlet. But what I really liked about this piece is that it can be footed. It's wood, a planter, but also see, it goes right up inside of itself so that you can make it a short planter if you like as well. I thought that was kind of cool. So this I am going to be painting and distressing. Hopefully I have time in this video for everything. I have some Mod Podge, Mod Podge a Clear Acrylic Sealer in a matte finish. I've got a variety of paint brushes, some utensils to put my paint in. I have a whole slew off to the side here of paints. And this is what we'll start with first. Now I'm going to do the front of it here rather than the top because where I have it sitting in my family room, um, you don't see much of the top. You primarily see the side of it. And I apologize for the way that this is going to be shown because I'm trying to look at it here and work on it. Maybe I could scoot myself a little bit sideways so that y'all can maybe see a little bit better what it is that I'm doing. Let me try that. There, that's a little better. So what I decided I'm going to put on this is the very first one that's here is the Farm Fresh. So I'll be putting Farm on one and then let's see, will Fresh work? Yep, be putting Fresh down on the other. Now everything that I have, I forgot to grab scissors. Let me go and do that right now. They are very handy, so that didn't take long at all. I hope I don't regret cutting this, but I think it's the best way for me to get this fitted into the space that I have. And if I make clean cuts here, I should be able to tape this back together should I ever need farm fresh straight across. Okay, 
I'm going to be using just a plain black on here. I have a burnt umber. Oh, I can keep that out because I need that for something else. Let me go grab that plain black and I will be right back. Okay, I got my apple barrel in jet black and while I was picking this up, I got a, a little thing of sandpaper as well because I think I'm going to do a light sanding over it. Uh, once I get it on. So, going to, oops, let's see, first put a little bit of black into my container here. It's not going to take much at all. That probably is even too much. Got a piece of paper to dab it off on. I'm also going to be using these brushes that I picked up at Walmart as well. They're from Waverly. And although this is a wax, a wax brush, I think it'll be good as a dabber brush as well. So again, let me make sure that I've got my farm where I want it. Let me turn this first here. Hmm. That's pretty good. Let me trim a little bit more off of this. And I am just eyeballing this. Alrighty, I think that's pretty good. And I'm gonna, you can't see, I'm gonna dab a little bit of black paint in here. And then off to the side, I have a piece of newspaper that I'm dabbing to take a lot of that paint off because I don't want it real thick. And then I'm just gonna dab, 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 trying to stay inside of my lines. This is kind of new to me. I'm not a big stenciler. So we're gonna see together how this comes out. Okay, got my, my M, a little bit more paint. Dab that off. Oh, I think I need more paint. I don't have enough on, actually. There we go. I think that's better. There we are. And I always wonder to myself why people don't wear gloves when they do this sort of thing. And then here I am, not wearing gloves. <laughs> Again, I am just dabbing, dab, dab, dabbing this on. I'm not stroking it, as that would for sure facilitate the paint going underneath of the stencil, and I don't want that to happen. But I am trying to fill as much of the lettering as possible. All right, let's see how I did. Okay, that's not too bad. That came out pretty well, I think. Pretty happy with that. Okay. Now, we trim a little bit more off of the end of the fresh here. And then I'm going to do, again, I'm going to kind of level this up as best I can. It's kind of hard for you to see, but with the ridge that's in the wood, and then eyeball it and make sure that it is as as uh, in the middle as I can get it. <clears throat> Again, I've got my paint back here, dabbing on the newsprint just to get some of the excess paint off. And then Hey, not too bad. What do you think? Came out pretty good, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna give that time to dry. I'm gonna set this aside and we will come back to that in a minute. 
when we'll do a little bit of distressing to that piece. So we have that. The next thing that I wanted to do, let's go ahead and work next on the bottom of this cloche here. If you might remember, I found a very, very large cloche, which I just happened to have right here when I was thrifting on a girl's thrift weekend and by chance found this wooden base for it, which I think is absolutely a perfect match. I don't mind that it has this little nub sticking out here. I love that. But what I'm not crazy about is the color of it. So I thought that I could um, stain it, but not using traditional stain. I wanted to use some burnt umber paint and water. So let me go ahead and get a little bit of water in this container. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush. I don't want the paint to dry in this. So hang in there. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I decided to kind of rinse out the container that I had the black paint in and put the burnt umber. umber. This is a folk art enamels. I may have just picked this up thrifting. I'm not sure. I have so much of this paint, it's hard to remember where I get it. So you can see it is it's a pretty dark looking brown. But my plan is to, like I said, kind of make a stain out of it. I'm going to put a little bit of water and then mix it up with my paintbrush because I'm hoping this will make kind of a stain. I did, uh, before I got started on everything, I went out and gave this a nice little sand, a one-time over sanding, and then just wiped it down. And I want to make sure that I have enough of this that's going to go over both sides because I want to do the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and make just a little bit more because quite honestly, I would rather have a little more than not enough and not be able to mix the same color paint or in this case, stain. All right. This is kind of a, a leap of faith here. Don't know what this is gonna look like. We're gonna find out together. Okay, that's not bad. It's giving it a, a darker color, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanna go around the sides here. And I wanna keep this going in the grain of the wood. I'm hoping it covers up that kind of watermark there that was left by something. Yep, it's definitely darkening it down, which is just what I wanted it to do. Make sure I do inside that little circle. The way that came out. So there, it looks a little orangey on camera. That's what it started at. And that's what we have it as now. And if I don't like the, the exact color, I can always go back and put another coat on to kind of darken it up even more. I'm gonna go around, do these edges. Looks like I got a kitty here there. I was kind of surprised. I was thinking that this might pull a lot of the color into it, but perhaps this wood is not as dry as I was thinking, originally thinking it was. Oop, got some drip there. I'm a little overzealous with my so-called paint, or my stain, so-called stain. Let me wipe that off. There we go. Oh, I like this much better than just this sort of kind of blonde wood that we had originally.
that might actually help with the darkness of the paint. I'm not sure. Something that I could try in the future. All right. So there we have it. Now this one also, I'm gonna let this dry, but this, I may go ahead and put a second uh, coat of the paint on it once this has had a chance to dry pretty well. As it's, it is wet, I can feel it. And then I will definitely put a coat of the Mod Podge Clear Acrylic on it once it is all finished. And this I will show you with the cloche on it once it's all done. Okay, so we'll set this aside to dry. I'm going to set my paint, or my, what am I calling it, my stain. I'll set that aside. Now, the next thing that I wanted to work on were these little bottles. I got these at a thrift store on my girls' weekend away. I thought they were just adorable, and I loved the little red and white gingham tops that were on them. So I thought they might, might look cute just simply painted with white chalk paint. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let me see here, do I have another container? I think I could go ahead and put it right in here. These are containers that I have been keeping from uh, soups and uh, the little snack, fruit cup snacks that my daughter eats. These are great little containers that you can use a couple of times before actually recycling them. Uh, this is, as you can see, this is a Waverly white chalk paint. I picked that up at Walmart. I believe it was in the neighborhood of about $10, something like that. So I'm just going to give these bottles, just a plain old, actually I don't even need that container right now, just a nice coat of white chalk paint. I'm going to go ahead and touch up the rims, if you can see down here where my fingers were and I couldn't really get to. I'm going to go ahead and paint those as well. Although now that I think about it, because of the way I'm going to be using these, really that's not necessary because the red and white whoop, lid is going to go right on top of it. This I'm going to save and possibly do in another video because I really want to show you this uh, distressing technique. And here is one that has been finished. You could see there's some light distressing on it that says uh, four ounces pure honey. So this is two coats of white chalk paint. And then let me show you how I did the distressing. I have another one here that is all done and ready to be distressed. And what I used was newspaper print. Found it by accident. I, I it just, it just, I stumbled across it. I really, really like this. You can even, if you have, you see this is a green, I'm not gonna do it on here because that's not the look that I'm going for. But even if you have enough of a, of a green or a red newsprint or something, you can use that color. It will come off on what it is that you're working on. I just want to have a black. Now, I will say this gets messy because the newsprint will get on your hands. So, you just lightly take your newsprint. And can you see? It's just the ink from the newsprint that's coming off on the bottle. But I really, I don't know, I really like it. I do this little rim here. I hope you can see, it's hard to do this. Watch what I'm doing and seeing what you're seeing at the same time. But I think you've got the idea. Now I will say, you have to be careful 
because on an area like this that has some ridges in it where there are there, there are brush strokes you have to be careful if you were to go over that area it almost turns out looking like it were tree bark because the the raised areas of the paint are going to take the newspaper ink um, that's not what i want here so i'm going to just carefully go along the areas that i do want there's a perfect example right there up around here so you just go over it wherever you want your distressing is where you hit it with the newspaper I'm going to try and show you this close up as best that I can move my paper See what I'm seeing here and then I'll show it to you yep there we go can you see how that comes out there I really like this look now I have not tried it on a wood piece but I really don't see why you couldn't use it on a, a wooden piece all it's really doing is just taking again it's taking that newspaper ink and applying it to any raised areas on your piece so rather than taking off or taking away you're actually adding to it because I don't know if you've ever tried if you've if you've done a piece with milk glass but you don't like the distressing on it and you've either wet distressed it or sanded it down it takes several coats if you want to put that paint back on um, to cover up the areas that the paint has been removed from. But in using this technique, if you're not happy with the way that it comes out, one coat, just simply one coat of chalk paint will cover it right up. So you're not replacing the paint, you're simply covering up what you don't like. So again, I'm not showing you that very well. There we go. So I think you've got the idea here. I painted a couple of these for my daughter. This is the color that she really, really likes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down here and see how this turns out with the black on a color that is not white. Oh yeah, we're getting the same technique on it. So I'd love to know what you folks think of this newspaper print distressing. Um, does it make sense to you? Is it something that you think you might want to try? And if you do, I'd love to know how it turned out for you. You know, your hands do get kind of, kind of messy with it. You can always wear gloves, of course. Remember again, this is not taking off, it is it's simply enhancing, it's just putting ink on to the piece. So well, I think I'm going to be using this a lot in my crafting. So there is the one for my daughter. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to finish up these others here. I'll do this off camera, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you kind of how I put things together, and we'll see, you know, if we like it. One last thing. Let's go ahead and add one more coat of the paint stain.
Yeah, that darkened it up a little bit for me. I, I like this better. The other one had more of an orangey color to, to me. I, I wasn't caring for that too much. So I like the way that this has turned out. I'm going to go ahead and put another coat on this. I'm going to finish off all of these other projects uh, off camera. Oh, almost forgot. Got to show you the distressing on the Farm Fresh crate. Now this is, sadly, this is the only sandpaper that I have on hand, and it is a pretty hard or a pretty, um, it's not a soft sandpaper, it's pretty gritty, but it's all that I, I have, so it's what I'm going to have to use, but I'm going to use a very gentle hand with it, and hopefully it will be all right. Let me close up my paint. I don't want to get any stuff into that. I'm going to put this over the side too, my paint stain that I made and let's just yep, I think that gave it just enough distressing not too much but just enough to make it look like it was kind of warm so that's it everybody um, I hope you enjoyed these couple of kind of thrift flips uh, trash to treasures um, stay tuned because I will be showing you at the end of this video where I put all of these items in my home. I do hope you enjoyed. And as always, everyone, please take very, very good care of yourselves. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. So here is a quick look at where I used my crate that I stenciled on the Farm Fresh 2 earlier. All of the items that you see back here in this little corner, I have thrifted. Some of them you may recall from some of my previous thrift videos. But I do like the way that the crate turned out. I think it looks absolutely adorable here in this little corner. So let me show you where I used some of the other items that I worked on today. And here we have is what might be a temporary home for the little jars that I chalk painted white. You can see them right there nestled in with their red and white gingham tops. This is the dough bowl that I had thrifted some time ago from the Durham Rescue Mission outlet. I finally have it all staged up with an old flower sifter that I found, some faux lavender from Walmart. That stuff is amazing if you get a chance to pick it up. I believe it's only $3.50 for a whole bundle of it. I have a couple of old, oh sorry, that you might hear Violet in the background. I have a couple of old rolling pins and just an old spoon and a dish towel that my daughter gave to me some time ago. But there finally is my dough bowl that I have been promising to show you folks. And then just over to the left here is how I have staged up my cloche with the board that I just stained with the paint. I really like the way that it turned out. I just added a little mister to it, a plant that my friend Anna gave to me, and some farmhouse beads. Last thing I have to show you are the little chalk painted and newspaper distressed jars. That's coming up next. Finally, we have the last two projects, which were the Newspaper print distressed chalk painted jars. That was a mouthful. Here are the first three that are going to be going to my daughter. I thought that some pompous grass would look really nice in there, kind of give it a sort of a beachy vibe. And then on the other side here are the ones that I'll be keeping for myself. There is the distressing all done up 
I'm really happy with the way that these turned out. And just one sprig a piece of the lavender from Walmart. So that is it, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry that, that this video ran over so long. As I said, these are new videos to me, how-tos. So be patient with me while I kind of fine-tune them. But in any case, I really hope that you did enjoy. Let me know if you're going to try the newspaper print distressing in the comment section down below. And if you do, uh, shoot me your project at uh, jmozgo at yahoo.com. I'd love to see how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed. As always, everyone, please take very, very good care of yourselves. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.